Welcome back to my 52 frames videos. This week I decided on making a 3-in-1 combo video. The reason for this is my heart weren't really into these three videos due to a nightmare I had to go through. But this nightmare also led to some exciting news. For my handful of followers, they might have noticed that there has been bigger gaps in between my videos and that I'm quite behind on the weeks. This all started after our amazing Africa trip that I realized a few of the family run websites got infected with malware. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I will tell you it took up a lot of my time. I learned even more. And something exciting did come from it, but more about that at the end of this video. I'm trying to play catch up here, and my heart went in these three photos, so I decided to bundle them up. It's amazing to see the amount of control one has over your creative work. With me being distracted with the website and my head and heart not into these photos, I could really tell with the quality of photos I produced. The three weeks and themes that I'm going to try and cover in this video is technology and then things are still okay-ish. Then one that I can't pronounce, I'm going to try, so I'm going to check. It's anthropomorphism. I might have pronounced that entirely um, wrong. But the bottom line is, it's to find human traits in non-human objects. And then the last one was leading lines, which is a fun topic. But like I said, I was distracted. I was quite excited about the technology theme, since I'm a bit of a gadget girl, and I had all of these ideas. But that was during a travel week, and just when the whole website drama started. Thus, my sister made a comment that says, well, why don't you just put all your technology together and photograph that? And that kind of stuck with me. The only problem is that a lot of the technology I use for my photography, so it wouldn't really be possible to put everything down and then photograph it. So I decided to zone in on something specific, and that's my Apple addiction. Unfortunately for my figure and my husband's wallet, that isn't the fruit, but rather the technology ecosystem, which I absolutely love. So I decided to go with a flat lay with all of my Apple products. Okay, so I've started with my photos on the coffee table to get the wooden background, but the coffee table was just too small. So I decided to use a yoga mat on the other side, which we don't use that often, which is still clean and has quite a nice texture to it with a light tint of blue um, to take my photo. And when I looked at the T3 magazines, I see that they like to elevate the tech quite a bit. So since I've got most of my boxes, I decided to use them since they are exactly the size of the devices. Um, to elevate them a bit and just give it a bit more, I think, depth, I would say. Okay, the um, layout took me quite a while because I um, wanted to get something that worked perfectly. I decided to go upside down for two reasons. I wanted to keep it Apple themed, so I wanted to showcase the Apple logo as much as possible. And then the second reason, and probably the bigger reason, is I'm too lazy. I was too lazy to clean up all the fingerprints and screens to get that clean look, as well as with a photo, the reflection would be a nightmare. So I decided to put them upside down to showcase the Apple logo perfectly that my phone I also used. Let me just take it out of the cover. I've put that down there. And then the laptop I kept closed. So the first photo I did take was um, I had it like that, but then, oh no, it was the other way around. But then, 
Okay, so I want to make sure that my Apple logos are all facing the same direction. Even though they're quite small there, they, um, they are part of the photo, so I wanted to keep that. And then I wanted to add the pencil in. And once again, I'm trying to align the pencil so that it's centered there as well as center with the little mini home pod. I used the, to try and level them out. That's the other thing why I used the boxes was so that it's easier to square out my photo than it would be with devices only. So yeah, that was the layout. It took quite a bit of Tetris playing to get the composition. Oh, and the last thing is the watch which will fill in that gap, as well as add a pop of color to the photo. Um, but yeah, it took a bit of Tetris playing to get the composition right. And I must be honest, the flat lays look quite simple, but the amount of time you spend getting the composition right, getting the spaces right, and I'm still not convinced everything, I'm sure if I go into post, I will still see flaws in my composition. Um, takes a lot longer than one would expect. For the edit, I started with the alignment tool to try and minimize the distortion. Then I focused a lot on removing or minimizing shadows since I didn't take this in a light box. Lastly, I flipped the photo to the side for another perspective and to show the most prominent apples the right side up. Next up was anthropomorphism. Well, what is this unpronounceable term? It's basically seeing human traits in non-human objects, like seeing faces in some random object. But this week, the wheels really came off. The UAE received record-breaking storms, and so was my malware situation. So I just went out one afternoon, shot a few photos, and decided to kind of emphasize on the situation I had with my malware, and used my Bugs Bunny Teddy as a prop. And although I think this photo came out better than the one I submitted, I weren't sure if that was really in theme, since they, more, they talked about it more in the sense of seeing faces and stuff in random objects. So using a Teddy, I didn't really know if that would work. So on our Sunday evening stroll, we saw these two buildings and it looked like they were looking at me, so I decided to rather go with them. It's not a great photo, but I thought it was more in theme. So, on the Monday morning, my deadline in the UAE is 8 o'clock, since I think it's midnight in um, the US that the cut-off time is. Monday morning, I jumped out of bed, went to take the photo and submitted it, I think, like an hour before deadline. Since then, I must be honest, I've noticed quite a few more faces looking at me from random stuff. But do I really want to photograph them? Nah, I don't think so. The third topic for this week's video 
was leading lines. And it feels like a missed opportunity. It's a great topic and I had two semi-failed attempts. The first were patterns in the sand after the rain. The rain and the sand here is actually, let's circle back to the sand picking, but it's different. It doesn't, the water doesn't just sink in, so it lies uh, for quite a while. And as the water went down, it created these patterned lines. And I thought it would be a great photo opportunity. And although playing in the mud, ankle deep, was quite fun, the photos just didn't feel that way to me. The second opportunity, we went for a quick photo walk at the Bike Creek Harbour. But even there, my mojo was just off. photos, Tashas and myself decided on the high key hydrant to submit. Okay, enough about me moaning about my crap photos. I want to get to the silver lining of this entire storm, but before we get to that, I have to give you a bit of background. A few years ago in my downtown, I decided to start a travel blog for Tashas and myself called Wandering Wolves. This was basically to one, keep the all story and memory alive for ourselves, but also share it with friends and families, our stories and photos and travels. So needless to say that when that website got infected, it shook me quite a bit. Once again, without boring you with all the details, I decided to move my website altogether to Squarespace. And no, I'm not sponsored by them like everybody else, maybe not yet, I paid full price for them and I'm quite happy at this stage. But with that price tag came a lot of thought about the website and Wandering Wolves and what I would like to do with it, its potential and so on. I always saw Wandering Wolves and my photography separate. But when thinking about it, they actually are married together in more ways than one. So I decided, and this is where the exciting part comes in, is that I'm going to start a second part to my website, our website, I'm talking about me because it's my photography, but it's actually our website, that is myself, which focuses on photography and 52 frames. I'm going to make a summary, and that's live already, about my previous years in 52 frames, all the photos I've submitted. And then I would like to start a weekly blog, which at this stage is purely the photo I submitted, the other options there were, and previous attempts. But I would love to hear from you what else you would like from it. Maybe tips and tricks that I used that week, something I learned during that week. Uh, anything would be helpful since I really want to up the game on that side of the blog. And hopefully, Wandering Wolves can become much more than it already is. I know this video was late and watered down, 
but I hope to get back on track again soon and find my focus and inspiration for the coming weeks. Next week's photo feels quite fitting after everything that happened and is the perfect segue. Join me then to see what I photograph for the theme, Something I've Made. Thank you for watching and see you then.